For the first time, Cristiano Ronaldo is being put under the microscope. Sports scientists are testing the component parts that make him one of the world's most valuable footballers. His body strength has been tested. But now, scientists are going to test his mental ability. How much of Ronaldo's success comes from what his mind is doing on the pitch? He is as well a uh, little bit air of arrogance, you know, but believe that he is the number one. First, it comes from the fact that you know you can. Deeply inside himself, he knows that if he wants, he can pass anybody. If you are strong mentally, the quality is coming natural. So I always try to be focused in my game and um, my mental is, is quite good. To find out how his mental ability contributes to his performance, the scientists are going to start by testing Ronaldo's spatial awareness. They're fitting him with these state-of-the-art eye trackers that will reveal exactly what he looks at when he plays. Okay, left one. They are operated by equipment specialist John Ward. And up to the top. Perfect. That's good. And running this test is sports psychologist Zoe Wimshurst. With Ronaldo, he's going to be using all of his senses pretty much while he's playing. Probably around between 80 and 90% of the information that he's taking in will be coming through his eyes. During this test, Ronaldo is going to try to stop Andy taking possession of the ball, and the technology will reveal how he does it. So, John, the eye tracker, explain to us exactly how this works. OK, so you both wear an equipment where we have a camera looking at the eye, yeah. and it uses infrared light to reflect from the eye. This picks up a, an image, and we have a camera at the front here that looks at what you're seeing, so mm -hmm. yourself and Cristiano. The software will then match those two together. We'll see exactly what you guys are looking at. Fantastic. Let's do this thing. OK, let's see if you could keep that ball five seconds away from me. Play. That's good five seconds. That's a good five seconds. That is quality. There's no doubt that Ronaldo's feet are fast and effective, but what part does his mind play in this ability? The eye trackers show intriguing results. On the replay, the little red dot shows exactly what Ronaldo's looking at. You'd expect a lot of players to be focused on the ball the whole time. With Ronaldo, he did look at the ball a fair amount of time, but he was much more looking around, looking at the defender and taking in the information from his body and also scanning for the spaces beyond the defender. Andy, on the other hand, can't afford to take his eyes off the ball because he doesn't have quite the same ability to predict where the ball is going. To actually see what's going on, we need to slow it down to one third of actual speed. Yeah. That's how fast Cristiano is, so you didn't have much of a chance, I'm afraid. Thanks. In eight seconds, he pulled 13 moves on you. OK, and we're not just talking kicks of the ball, we're talking step over, spins. Oh, it was beautiful. So you can see here on the, the gaze data, you can see yeah. he's concentrating on the ball. But what you'll see, and the interesting thing, is when he wants to go past you and looking how you're moving, he's predicting where you're sort of going to be. He's looking for movement in the hips to sort of plan his next move. So he, he looks at the ball, then he looks at where I move, and then he executes his, his trick. You see it comes in, looks at your foot, looks to the other one, up to the hip. Really accurate, precise, sharp movements. And then when we look to watching you, you're mostly trying to follow the ball, which means you're only ever going to be able to react to where the ball is moving rather than anticipate in advance anything that he's going to do. So you're always going to be that one step behind. And also, your eye movement, you can see, is much more all over the place. Well, my eye, this looks more like a pinball where my eye's going. He's locked in. You're constantly chasing yeah. him, basically. And I bet if you asked him, you probably wouldn't know what it was that he was looking at. It's all in his subconscious. He knows where he's picking up the information that's going to best help him. And without even thinking about it, he's looking for those angles of your hips, your knee and your foot. And obviously, it's working pretty well for him. So that's just second nature to him? Yeah. Ronaldo's subconscious ability has come from thousands of hours of practice, which have filled his mind with so many permutations of the game to tap into, that when it comes to match play, he has an uncanny ability to perform without having to think or even look at the ball.
He is effectively a scholar of football. It's the same way as studying any other subject, learning a new language, anything like that. You build up experience, you learn the basic rules of grammar in the different words that are available to you. So in football terms, that's going to be the skills, then putting them into a match situation. And so as you become more fluent in the language, you don't need to think about it as much. So Ronaldo's vast experience gives him the ability to intuitively read the game under normal conditions. But what if the conditions are very far from normal? Can Ronaldo still hit the back of the net if all the lights are turned off and he's in complete darkness? OK, what we're going to do, we're going to have Andy feeding the balls in as if it's a cross, and then sometime in the ball flight, the lights are going to go black, so you won't be able to see anything at all. We're expecting you to be able to put the ball in the goal. That's what we're hoping will happen. We're hoping that you'll have picked up some advanced cues from Andy's body position, the shapes, the positioning of his feet and his hips, and therefore we'll be able to tell exactly where the ball's going to go and get yourself in the right position, even though you can't see it. OK. Taking Ronaldo on in this seemingly impossible test is an amateur footballer called Ronald. Come and join me, Ronald. Ronald, Ronaldo. So we've got Ronald in here, same age as you, roughly the same height. We're going to use Ronald as a comparison and see how he reacts doing this same test. Ronald is going first. Dark! <laughs> Light! Light! <laughs> so what does the night vision reveal? Ronald misses the ball by quite a way. Perhaps not that surprising. But can Ronaldo do any better? I hope to do once. <laughs> Dark! Light! Aye, that's one straight in the back. The night vision replay shows how differently Ronaldo performs. To confirm that wasn't just luck, another attempt. Dark! Light! Love that! Be careful! <laughs> and the replay? How hard is that? It's difficult because it's change a lot. Yeah. Because you are focused on the ball and after non light you you have to try to to memorize the ball. Human reaction time is about 200 milliseconds and by 500 milliseconds Ronaldo's subconscious has interpreted Andy's body language, worked out which direction the ball will go in, calculated its speed and trajectory and then programmed his body to reach it at the optimum moment. Love that. It's almost as if they're doing maths in their head, even though they wouldn't be able to describe it to you. You could see from their performance that Ronaldo saw the first part of the ball flight information. He'd picked up information from Andy kicking the ball and was able to move his body into the correct position. This is because he's processed the information. He has experience of where the ball is likely to go. He's able to analyse all that as it's coming towards him and therefore connect successfully with the ball. Love that. <laughs> Ronald, on the other hand, doesn't have the same level of experience. He would have watched the ball fight. It's likely that he will just have had his eyes on the ball instead of picking up any information from Andy himself. And then when the lights go down and it's black, he's kind of stranded in no man's land a little bit and just has to do his best to react, but is naturally going to struggle with that. So far, the lights have been shut off when the ball is in midair. But now, the lights will be turned off just at the moment Andy kicks it. Can Ronaldo score with only Andy's body language to go on? Here you go, we'll get one. We good? Yeah, good. OK, Ronaldo. Dark! Light. Light. Aye! Ronaldo, quality. What was that, a shoulder? Back! <laughs> Great finish. Great finish.
That was a great finish. This is great because I, I imagine the ball is coming. I scared to go with the, with the face, so I'll go with half chest, half shoulder, and then put the ball inside. Quality, great finish. So, Zoe, tell me, how difficult is that? I mean, the last one when we adjusted the time of the lighting. Yeah, it's so difficult. They've done studies like this using computer simulations, so you watch it on a computer and just have to say where the ball's going. And from them, they can see that elite athletes can tell much earlier where the ball's coming from. But to have to actually produce a physical response when a ball is flying at you, then it's really good skills, amazing. Top man, that's ledge. Thank you. I was dreading I was going to hit you in your face with one of them balls. That was my worst fear. The test proves that Ronaldo can perform an almost impossible task. He can make decisions this quickly and with such little information to go on because in his subconscious, he's an expert in the science involved. Ronaldo can tap into that knowledge, tap into his memory banks, and he can then use that to help him. So what you're saying, despite the location, because it's the first time being here, he's still recalling the pictures, what he's done previous before, and on other locations, maybe in matches and in training, and he's recalling all those messages, and then his brain saying, this is the execution. Exactly, and that's kind of the whole point of people training. Even though they can't train in a match environment, they can still take their experiences from the training ground, put it into practice in the match, take things from one match and utilise it in another, and even utilise things in a really strange situation like we've got here. In terms of the match, this means that instead of having to track the ball completely onto his foot, he could be scanning to see where the goalkeeper is, if there's any movement there, so he can then place his shot past where the goalkeeper might be. Well, it's, it's base of the, my success is to improve myself all the time. So this is why I'm one of the best players in the world. Next, Ronaldo's technique is tested as scientists dissect his most formidable weapon, the one that goalkeepers fear most, his free kick. <laughs> 